When I recorded the safety training video for the bandsaw, the basic operating procedures and all of the details of how to safely use the machine, I mentioned that I was going to demonstrate a task when I got to this smaller machine and I didn't do it. And that is some more fancy tasks of how to cut curves in here where I can't turn that corner. But I also don't want to back out these really long distances. I don't want to do this long path and then back the blade out and risk pulling the blade off of the wheel. It's a really long path to back out. The common sense approach is to do the short one and back out the shortest amount possible and then come back and do the longer one. And then the piece falls out. So we're going to demonstrate that. When I get into the corner, that's when I want to back my blade out gently, carefully, without pulling it off. This is why backing it out while the blade is running can be problematic. It can quickly knock your bandsaw out of whack. I did have some trouble taking this corner and I had to make it in short little steps and correct every step of the way. The little facet cuts, the tangent cuts. I could probably have cut this straight in and then come in this and I would have had more play. So I had a couple of different options. I thought I could make this turn and do it just fine, but uh, it was a little bit tight here on this outside curve. And maybe I just didn't have my technique down right. I wasn't turning right. I was advancing too fast without turning. You can't turn in the spot, but you can turn slowly and progress forward. I probably could have come in from here and gone straight into the corner and then had a less complicated backing out and then I could have come here and cleaned that up. You've got multiple options. You've got to think through your project. You've got to think through your approach. You've got to think through all your steps ahead of time. It's not one step at a time. You've got to conceive of the whole and what would be the best approach to accomplishing it. Now I can go ahead and do this long one and I should be able to do that. These are much slower curves. I should be able to do that. Assuming I can maneuver my piece yeah, I'll be able to maneuver my piece. If if not, I'd have I want might want to chop off a bit of this to get it ready. Now I've cut my piece, the two pieces fall apart, and I have successfully done this in the most efficient way for this machine and the most efficient way to keep from knocking my tool out of whack and out of adjustment. I did the short cut first, and then I came back and I did this longer cut. I did have some trouble here. You can see where I'm following my line here. I always want to be just shy of the line. I don't want to be exactly on the line. If it's an important piece that I'm working on, I don't want to cut into my piece. I want to be just a bit away from the piece and then I can sand back down to my line. But as I was coming in here, I miscalculated and I cut into my piece and I don't have my line marked on my wood anymore. I did the same thing over here. I couldn't make that curve properly and get through there. I don't know if my blade's a little bit dull or if it's just too wide of a blade for this particular cut. But that's basically how you want to cut your pieces where you've got a short run and a long run. You want to try to always plan your short run first. Sometimes you're going to have things that are laid out on the wood that are a little more complicated and a little bit more challenging. Now I should want to do this short run first and then come back and do the long run. But as you'll see, as I try to go into here, I'm not going to be able to pivot my wood 
to get into that corner because I'm going to hit there. So I'm probably going to do what I can. I probably marked this on the wrong side of the board. I probably should have marked it on the other side of the board, but let's figure out how we can get this cut and make it work. Because I think once this piece is gone, then I can do that. Or I could do that. I could, I could chop a chunk of this off so I can get into the corner, but I'm not sure even if this chunk is gone, if I'm going to get into the corner. So I have a couple options. I could start here and then go as much as I can and then deviate from my curve and go down to here and let this whole waste piece fall away. And then I can come back and do this one and then I've only got a little shorter run. I think I'm gonna try that one. I'm gonna try that, see what happens. <laughs> quite make it into my corner where I wanted to get to so I got the best I could. That was the best I could do because the board over here is was in the way of the back side of the saw. Now I can finish this off. I can redraw this on the back side. Of course, it's going to be hard to do since I just sort of freehanded it. But if I had a template or something that I was working off of, I should be able to apply the template to the other side and get relatively close. And I could do the relief cuts from this side, do, 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 do. And that will give me a line to follow on the other side when I flip it over. So I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> Normally I would put my hand here, but I don't want to block the view of the video, so I'm going to put my both my hands over here. Now I have my relief cuts. I should just be able to follow that. Bam, 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 bam. And those pieces should drop out. And the end result is I actually got pretty close to my line. I'm pretty happy with that. That's the normal amount that I would have to sand off and file off. So that's very good. Excellent.